that's good beautiful um um i think the last person i'll probably say our guest just to indulge us uh, if that's fine um before we formally introduce you but i just thought it would be nice to engage with us so what's your name sir before we formally introduce you um a fun fact about yourself and where would you be right now if you had the chance uh fun fact um my name is praise praise george um I love books. Right. I love books. I love. I love. I love. I love books more than I like. I like clothes. Th that's. I love great. books more than I like clothes, because books will get me all the clothes I ever need in this life. Books it will get me everything I need in this life. I like. I love books more than I'm. I'm surrounded by books because I love wisdom. I love knowledge. I'm surrounded by books. Uh, if you get into my library, I want to bet you for the next five hours, you won't leave. You won't go anywhere else. I, wow. You won't leave. I'm telling you, you won't go, you won't go anywhere else because all the money I'll have used to buy all the nice trendy clothes that are now useless. I use them to buy books. Those books are now useful and all the trendy clothes are useless. You have to be wise. Mm. That's a fun fact about me. Right. Okay. That's, um, <laughs> That's a fun fact. And where would you be right now if you had the chance? Where would I be? I want to go to Holland. I wanted to go to Holland before the lockdown, but I went to New York. My wife said, uh, she said, uh, Holland, Holland, why do you want to go to Holland alone? But I want to go. I just want to go and ride bicycle in Holland. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's, that's a very nice, um, that's very nice. Holland. It'd be really cold right now, but I think, I think it'd be cold, but that's really good. So um, we're going to be starting right about now. Um, we're going to pray, of course, but I think it would just be fair to have like little rules of engagement, so to speak. Um, well, we have our guest speaking. Um, I don't know. Is I would call him Mr. Slash Uncle Praise George. Um, he'll be speaking to us about relationships, but ground rules or rules of engagement, so to speak. It'll be nice to have like pen and paper. It'll be nice to jot down what we'd learn so we could always go back to them, whatever we've learned. Um, we can't really use the chat box as much. Actually, not yet. We can't use the chat box. Um, I think the only people who are really who could use the chat box will be the host, so to speak. So that will be me, Uncle Femi, um, Auntie Toyin, and Dura will be the ones using the chat box. Asides us, I think the chat box should not really be in use. Um, what else would we say? Please let's oh. have fun. You can ask questions. You can't ask gonna questions. Say, yeah, questions. Yeah. It's on Slido. Slido. Are you I will post the link just now. In the chat box. Beautiful. So that will be done. And then when um, our guest is done speaking, we'll, by that time, I think while he's speaking, we can send the questions through and then yeah. we can ask those questions if you need to know anything. I think that's all we need to know, except I'm missing something. Anything extra? Any other thing? No? Okay. I think I covered everything then. That's fine. So... I think we would like to welcome our guest speaker, who's known as um, Mr. Uncle Praise George. He is a renowned relationship expert, so to speak. We know he's married and, you know, they do that well by the special grace of God. He's a writer of books as well. He's written a good amount of books on relationships as well. So let's just say he knows what he's doing and he knows what he's saying by the power of the Holy Spirit as well. So it would be nice to welcome him. Welcome, sir. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to clap. Um, we can only. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, 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 Sister Tony, please, can you say a word of prayer? Let, let's start. Can you say a word of prayer? I can't hear you. Unmute her. Okay. 
in jesus name amen our father and our god we thank you thank we thank you. you for your faithfulness in each and every one of our lives we thank you for this gathering because it is unto you it was your idea it is your, your initiation father lord we just lift up the everybody participating the speakers the host co-hosts Father Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that may we do all by your unction in the name of Jesus. May the Holy Amen. Spirit take absolute control Amen. of our thoughts, our words, Amen. our deeds over Amen. this forum today in Jesus' name. We pray for the wisdom of God to settle mightily upon our speaker. Amen. May he be your mouthpiece this evening in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Okay. So, um, um, this is an um, 1818, um, interesting. Okay. So we're, we're supposed to be discussing navigating godly relationships. I want to talk about, um, I want to talk, talk about um, eight things, eight things about godly relationships. So I'll, I'll, I'll speak in very quickly, very fast. Um, um, Take notes if you can. Um, um, I have, I, I have, by the grace of special grace of God, um, um, been speak, speaking to singular marriage for over two decades. Written over on relationships alone, I've, I've written so many books, over 30 books on relationships. But my, some of my books are on Amazon, Praise George, Amazon, you see some of my books. So I want to talk about, I want. To, I just want to go into eight things I feel will be helpful um, as foundational for godly relationships, as foundational for godly relationships um, in no particular order, no particular significant, you know, you just take what is important to you, what connects with you and, and, and handle it and use it. Maybe that's what God is talking to you. So the first thing about relationships, the very first thing before we're talking about engaging relationships, you have a relationship with anybody. The first thing is purpose. Number one purpose, have a purpose for your life. Majority of relationships that crash, do you know why they crash? They crash because somebody wakes up one morning and says, I want to go and discover myself. Hello, where you lost very clearly, means that that person did not was not founded on purpose no purpose no no sense of purpose and so before we talk about relationship before we talk about engaging with other people you have to do something for your own self for your own life you you, you have to have an understanding of your purpose and the reason why you're here you have to have a very strong clear understanding of your purpose in life listen to me listen to me many of you or well I can say all of us, you, you've engaged with people and you, I mean, they, they can't tell you that, oh, this, this, this person woke up one morning and said that um, I've always wanted to be a musician or something, but look at me, I'm reading law and you're with somebody and you guys have been together for a while and the person never knew about all those things. You know why? Because your purpose was not clear. No sense of purpose, no sense of purpose. Why are you here? You're not here to have relationships. You're here, you're here to live to leave, you're here on assignment. Every one of us here, we're here on assignment, on a purpose. Every one of us, you're here on an assignment. And do you know what a relationship is? A relationship is for you to get somebody who will agree with that assignment and you guys will run that assignment together. That's it, that's it, that's why you're here. So when I'm talking about relationships, you have, you're, you're very clear about your purpose. You have a very strong sense of purpose. This is why I'm here. So when you meet the person who aligns with your purpose, you know, listen, this person is going my direction. It's very easy. But when you don't have a sense of purpose, you don't have a sense of direction. Let me tell you, you just be going any and everybody will be moving you. And you say, I, I, I just say, I'm, you know, today I'm, I'm in love with Jill. Tomorrow is Jack. Tomorrow is Mabel. Next tomorrow is Tina. Why? No sense of purpose, no sense of direction, nothing. And when, when you when you connect all these people when you when you when you when you okay so what was about Gina that you liked oh I I I, I liked her physique hello 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 <laughs> you liked her physique no that's not what we're talking about you're an adult we're talking about purpose you're a child of God purpose purpose that is why you're on this planet 
That is why you let me tell you, let me tell you something. Forget about your emotions, forget about all that. You know, some of you are saying, Oh, I oh, I I, I love, I, I love, I, I I love this lady. Oh, she's so I love Rita. Oh, I, I love Selena. Oh, I love Beyonce. Oh, she shows she's so hot. Hello. If Beyonce wakes up in the morning and says her mission in life is to go to the Amazon jungle and abandons you in London, what are you going to do with your life? It's not about figure. It's not about how nice you look. It's not about how fine you look. It's not about how tall you look. It's not about how rich you, you, you are. It's about purpose. If you fail on purpose, you failed on everything. Let's just be clear, all of us. If you fail on purpose, you failed. You failed. That relationship has failed. That's, that's, that's whatever you guys are doing. I don't know what you call it, but it's going to fail. Why? Because there's no purpose to it. There's no direction in your lives. So before you start chasing someone else's son or daughter, make sure that your own life is okay. So purpose, number one. Before you go and waste your time and energy on someone else's son and daughter, make sure that your own life is okay. So be clear on purpose, number one. What is your purpose? Why are you here? What are you doing with your life? In what direction are you going? In what direction are you headed with your life? If I ask everybody now, tell me where are you headed with your life? What do you want to do with your life? Can you tell me, are you sure? Are you really clear? Do you have clarity that this is what, this is what you want to do with your life? I, I wrote a book. I wrote a book. Um, um, two of my latest books, no, one, my latest book on Amazon is Finding Direction. Very powerful book, Finding Direction. I wrote a book titled Clarity because I discovered that majority of people have no direction in their lives. None. You have no direction. And if you don't have direction and you come and meet somebody who hasn't got direction, it's going to be trouble, trouble. So first purpose, that's the first thing. First purpose. First purpose. Before we're talking about your, your thinking, considering, okay, I want to be in a relationship and all that. So there has to be purpose, purpose to it. And um, um, I'm still going to come back to purpose later. You know, I'll, hopefully I'll come back to purpose, you know. Every relationship must have purpose. Every relationship must have purpose. Every relationship must have purpose. Everyone. If there is no purpose to a relationship, just know you're wasting your time. And um, you're going to get hurt or you're going to hurt somebody. There must be purpose. So you say, okay, why, am I, why do I want to start this relationship with this person? Um, why? There must be a purpose. There must be a purpose. It's not just, it's not just, you know, all those things are nice when we, we I mean, we watch them in movies or read them in books. They, they sound really sound nice. Oh, um, why am I with this person? Oh, the person makes me feel good. Yes, so, you know, I feel so, you know, I'm on cloud nine, yeah? What, where's the purpose? I want to, where's the purpose? Tell me, where's the purpose? It, it sounds good, it feels good, but where's the purpose? But there must be purpose. Number two, what value are you bringing to the relationship before you start a relationship? What value, value? What value are you bringing? What value do you have? What value are you offering? What value are you offering? You know, I'm on Twitter and, um, hey, why are you showing us all this, your, okay. <laughs> so I'm on Twitter and sometimes some of the small girls, they come and try their luck to see whether Mr. Praise might be interested. Now, I tell them that if you know the value that my wife is offering me, 100 of you cannot provide that value. 100 of you cannot provide the value she's providing. No, you guys, when you meet my wife, you understand what I'm saying. I said, so I tell those girls that 100 of you cannot provide the value that she's providing mentally, spiritually, the value that she's bringing to the table. Do you understand? So you ask yourself, what value are you bringing to the table? Say, uh, some people say the value I'm bringing to the table, is, uh, I'm, 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 you know. <laughs> I mean, they say all kinds of things, you know, all kinds of weird stuff. So I'm saying, listen, what value? What value are you bringing to the table? So you're talking about a relationship, a godly relationship. So, so what value are you bringing? Is it spiritual? Is it, is it mental? What, what value is it? Um, it do you have certain things that listen that this person just says and listen? Um, um, Kemi is bringing so much value to my life that listen, I can't find this thing elsewhere. 
I can't find it elsewhere. A guy, a guy sent me something, some DM um, a few days ago and talked about a lady. He was talking, talking, talking. The way he was talking about the lady, the lady was, maybe she's interested in something else. I just knew that this lady that, I mean, this woman is not bringing you any value. If the woman is bringing you value, you will have gone to go and meet her and speak to her because she's bringing you value. So I asked the guy that, what value is this lady bringing to you? He said, now that you asked the question, I just realized she's bringing me no value. But he was in a relationship with her until I asked that question. I said, what value is she bringing to you? He now realized that really that you ask this question, there's no value. No, don't let your life feel like, don't let someone sit somewhere and say, what, what value is you bringing to you? And they say zero value, God forbid. That, that's not you. That's not you. So you think, so I'm entering a relationship, what value am I bringing? What, what am I offering this person that this person has to search very hard to find elsewhere? You know, so value. First purpose, second value. Um, compatibility. Three, compatibility. I'm rushing this. You ask questions. Questions are good. So compatibility. Compatibility has to do with... Um, how you guys align mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially, um, vision-wise. One of the one of the strongest areas of com compatibility is vision. What what do you see? What direction are you going? Many years ago, many years ago, I was I was um, I was with this lady. So I, I many many years ago. I don't know. It's up to thirty years ago or something. So I was with this lady. So we're having a conversation. So I was just. I mean, I really really liked her. So so. So I said, where do you want to leave? I mean, where do you want to, where do you want to? Uh, she said she wants to leave somewhere. I don't know. I'm going to tell you something very interesting that she said, you know. So she said she wants to leave one part of the world. And I didn't want to live in that part of the world. I just, I just knew at that point, I knew it was not going to work. At that point, uh, I'm not, I mean, I wasn't going to force her to go and leave. She said she wants to leave one part of the world. Then she said something else very interesting. She said that, she wants to have a cook, that she wants to have a cook to be cooking my meals. Um, that just broke my heart because um, my mom and my dad, they, they were, they, before my dad passed on, I think they were married for like about 50 years. My mom always cooked for my dad. I've never, I didn't see any woman coming to cook for my dad. It was my mom. It was an act of love. She, she wanted because she wanted to do it. Even, even in her 60s and 70s, she still wanted to do it. She would cook for my dad as an act of love. So I'm saying this one, we've not even married yet. We've not even started. You are telling me that I should go and get cooked. You're not ready. So I didn't, that was the end of that conversation. Bye. Not, because I knew that, I mean, it, what, what, I mean, to me, those were my values. I believe that there must be something that my wife is doing for me. Those are my values at that time, you know, and um, it could not work. Now, vision, compatibility, vision, vision. Are you compatible? Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm going to tell you guys something. The earlier you tell yourself the truth, the better. You will save yourself from heartbreak. You know, all this thing that my heart was broken. My heart was whatever. Listen, the Holy Spirit told you no, and you didn't listen. And you just kept on going. Every time somebody tells me that, oh, my heart is broken, you know, the first thing I ask them, I have a prophetic gift. That's one of my strongest gifts. I have a prophetic gift. You can't lie to me. If you lie to me, I will discover. I might not know immediately, but I will, I will know. God will tell me. So everybody, anybody that comes to me that had a heartbreak, you know, the first thing I ask, I ask that, when the Holy Spirit told you, why didn't you listen? First, everybody says that, no, the Holy Spirit didn't say anything. I said, calm down, calm down. Just relax. And they will just remember, yes, the Holy Spirit told me something that I should ask this question or I should do that. I just ignored it. You know, listen, God cares about us more than we care about ourselves. Listen to me. God wants the best for you. The best. Do you understand what I'm saying? The very best for you. Because God wants you, listen, to accomplish great things with your life. So God wants to bring somebody of value into your life. So when the Holy Spirit tells you this, pay attention. Just you, listen, pay attention. Everybody that comes to me and says, oh, this, this woman did something terrible to me or this man did something ter terrible to me. When they finish their story, their stories of war, I ask them, listen, when did you start disobeying the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit told you something. Why didn't you do it? Then they, everybody just comes down and they just, yes, it's true. The Holy Spirit actually told me something, but I didn't do it. When they start telling themselves that truth, I respect them. 
But for you to say, God didn't tell me anything. I didn't hear anything. There was nothing. This person just deceived me. No, you have a father who loves you. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. I'm telling you, God loves you. So some, when in, in this euphoria and all that, just calm down and listen. What is God telling me? What is God saying? Not just how I feel. What, what is God telling me? Because God will always tell you something. So compatibility. If you are not spiritually compatible, this person never reads the Bible. This person never prays. This person never attends church. This person is a free thinker. You are in trouble already. You are in trouble. Doesn't read Bible, doesn't pray, is a free thinker. And you say, okay, I just love Jane. Hello, don't love Jane. Don't, don't love Jane. Please, <laughs> don't love Jane. <laughs> God can give you someone better. Please. <laughs> oh my God. Please. Please, please, please. God can give you someone better. God can give you someone better. I'm going to say one word, respect. 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 That's another, that's another, we'll talk about purpose, value, compatibility. Respect. Respect. Anyone who does not honor you does not deserve you. I'm going to say that again. Anyone who does not honor you does not deserve you. Anyone who does not honor you does not deserve you. I don't care who that person is. I don't care who that person is. The richest man in the world. Anybody who does not honor you does not deserve you. And what is, let me tell you, what is honor? You guys, you fix a date. You fix a date to meet somewhere at, let me just say at six, and the person turns up at seven or at 7.30, or at, and you're, you're just there, you're waiting. Say, what happened? Oh, um, I met some friends. I met some friends, on, um, you know, and, and we're chatting. So you met some friends, and you left me here sitting down for an hour, 30 minutes. You didn't even have the sense, you know, you, you didn't even have that <clears throat> courtesy to even call me and tell me, hey, something is going on here, and I've not seen these people, blah, 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 blah. No honor, zero, res zero respect. Let me tell you. All those things matter. If they don't honor you and respect you now, they will never honor and respect you. Anyone who does not honor you and respect you now will never honor and respect you. Those are the things you see. Those are the things you look for. Those are the things you invest in your relationship. Honor and respect. Honor. Honor. Anyone who doesn't honor you does not deserve you. Anyone who doesn't honor you does not deserve you. I'm going to say something very, very important. Um, people cannot give you what they don't have. People cannot give you what they don't have. You see all those quarrels you have, all those fights, all those arguments. Oh, why did you do this? Why did you do this? Why did you do this? They don't have it to give you. Don't marry that person. Don't, don't, don't do it. People cannot give you what they don't have. They, they, they don't have it. They can't give it to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? People cannot give you what they don't have. And listen, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Majority of us are rescuers. You just, you want to rescue people. You want to save people from themselves. So you see, you just see people that have, you can see that these people have issues. And you just, you feel I can rescue them. I can fix this person. Hey, I can, I can fix this person. I can, I can fix, you know, no, you can't fix anybody. You cannot fix anybody. People cannot give you what they don't have. They don't have it, so they can't give it to you. But somehow you say, no, I'll pray and I'll fast. I'll believe God. I'll trust God that this person is going to change. No, you can't change anybody to you. You can't. You can't change anybody. What you see is what you get. What, as it is, that's what just, this is what it is. And, 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 and accept it. And ask yourself, can I live with this? Can I live with this weakness? Can I live with this strength? Listen. We all have weaknesses and we all have, all have strengths. Now, let me tell you. In my family, in my family, my wife is the expert on forms, on anything, anything, anything forms, anything, anything digital. She's the expert. So even if I feel I know what I'm doing, I will ask her why, because it is her strength. It is an area of strength. I don't even question, I don't, you know, I, I let her do it. Now, you have, you, you, have to real, you have to understand that God brings people into your life who, who will make up for your weaknesses. 
they will make up for your weaknesses and you also make up for their weaknesses. Now, so they bring their strengths into your life and you bring your own strength into their own life. Now, listen, people cannot give you what they don't have. If they are not empowering you, they are not helping. You're looking at your life and say, this person is not empowering me. This person is not um, encouraging me. This person is not supportive. This person is not taking me to next level. Since I met this person, what has happened to my life? Has my life, the quality of my life improved? Has it improved? It hasn't improved. Then listen, God is not in this thing. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. 90 days. 90. Listen, everybody listen. 90, 90 days. 90 days. The quality of your the quality of your spiritual life has not improved. The quality of your job has not improved. The quality of your of your vision and dream has not improved. Has not improved. The quality of your of your delivery and execution in your business or job has not improved because you met somebody. There is a problem. There is a problem. And you tell yourself you are in a relationship. No, you are not in a relationship. You are not. You are not. You are with the wrong person. The moment you meet the right person something would just because when you guys are having conversation it's like you are it's like god sent an angel into your life to come and get things moving in your life that's what happens with the right person with the right person something because they somebody brings their strength into your life and you bring your own strength into their life people cannot give you what they don't have people cannot give you what they don't have you have to realize that you have to realize that you have to realize that people cannot give you what they don't have stop trying to change people stop trying to change people <laughs> you're laughing stop trying to change people please i beg you don't stop trying to change people some of you have been fasting and praying i want to change this but stop trying to change people stop trying to change people don't, don't stop trying. I know it's very difficult. It's very hard when you have that emotional commitment and, and, and attachment to someone and you say, okay, listen, let, let, let's see whether we can fix this. No. You know, when people bring relationship issues to me and you're talking, 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 and you're having, you're, you're having a conversation, I just, while you're talking, I already know what, I already know what the problem is. I already know what the problem is. And, um, Sometimes I tell, I tell you, um, but do you know something? 90% of the people I tell that this thing, this thing is not going to work. 90%, all of them go back and still try to make it work and it fails. All of them go back and still try to make it work and it fails. If you've lived long enough, you just know that, listen, you can't change people, period. I mean, period. If you've lived, lived long enough, you will know that you can't change people. I mean, that, that's it. You can't change people. You can't. Stop trying to change people. Please, I beg you. It's a waste of your life. If God cannot change them, do you understand? It is God's business to change them, not your business to change them. You can pray for them. You can bless them. But it is not your responsibility to take on a human being as a project and start. Now, while you're doing all that project and trying to change them, your life is just wasting away. Your life is just wasted away. Your life is wasted away. I will never forget a guy that he, the guy called me. I was in Nigeria. The guy called me. He called me and he was talking to me on the phone. I've never met him before in my life. So he was talking on the phone. When he was talking on the phone, he has blah, 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 blah with this person, blah, blah, blah with this person. I just said, leave that person. I said, leave that person. I said, nothing is going to work. Just go. Just leave that person. He said, why are you saying that? I said, it's not. I said, I, I can see that it's, it's not working. I said, don't waste your life. Just go. Just leave that person and leave. Just, just go, just go. So the guy dropped the phone. Four years later, the guy saw me in a mall in Nigeria. And he said that, how did you know? How did you know to tell me to leave that situation? How did you know? I said, because all the things you were saying were just pointing at the fact that you are trying to change somebody and that person is not going to change and you will just destroy your life. He said, do you know something? At that point, when I called you, I was so frustrated and I was even about to take my life at that time that, yes, at that time when I called you, I was so frustrated and about to take my life because of that relationship and because of what you told me to leave immediately, that was what saved my life. He said that was what saved my life. Four years later. But no, so sometimes, so when I'm speaking, I'm saying something sometimes and people are talking, I said, it's okay. 
I see I've I've gone through so many situations. I've gone through so many, so many, so many. A lady came to me and said she wanted to marry this this rich guy. I said, ah, really? Okay. So I asked, 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 asked some questions and blah blah blah. So she told me what it, she 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 told me a few things. I said, um, I said this thing is not going to work. I asked her a question. This is what I asked her. I said, if your best friend came to you and told you the same story you told me, what will you tell your best friend? She said she would tell her best friend not to marry the not to marry the guy. I said, but you want to marry the guy. I said, but you want to marry the guy. The guy wasn't evil or something. She just said, one of the things she said that struck me was that the guy, he, he borrowed, he, he got a loan of, um, I don't know, I don't know how many, how many thousand pounds. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, a I don't know, maybe 40 of, I don't know. They were in Nigeria at that time. Got, got a loan of I don't, 15 million naira or so. I used that of the 15 million, 10 million to buy a car. I said, he's a madman. He got a loan of 15 million. He didn't use it for business. He got he used the money to buy a car. And that car, that 10 million was not the complete money for that. It was a latest car, one kind of crazy car. I said, this guy will ruin you. I said, this guy will ruin you. You are borrowing money. You are to, I said, no, I said, this guy will ruin you. Do you know what? She didn't listen. She didn't listen to me. When the problem started, the problem just started. Because I knew the problems would start. I knew the problems would start. I knew. I knew the guy had no. The guy had no sense. Had no sense. So the problems just started. And when the problem started, there was nothing she could do. The problems just got worse and worse and worse. Why? Because the fundamentals were wrong. All the fundamentals were wrong. You have to check the fundamentals. If the fundamentals are wrong, you can't change people. Hello, you cannot change people. No matter how brilliant you are, you know, some of you, you are so very confident. I can change anybody. Ah, it's not, I can change anybody. What's it? You know, is it not Tony? Tony. Tony is a small boy. I can change him. I can handle Tony. I've handled bigger boys. Go and try it and you will understand whether you can handle Tony. Because Tony, because Tony has no mind of his own. Tony has no mind of his own. Some of you is Jane. Ah, Jane. Oh, don't worry. Jane is a nice lady. I know, I know how to deal with men. No, you don't know how to deal with women. You don't, you don't know how to deal with women. You don't know how to, if, you don't know how to deal with women. If this woman is not on your side, just forget it. Just run. Just run. Let me tell you something. When the when God wants to bless you, he brings somebody into your life. When the devil wants to destroy you, he brings somebody into your life. When God wants to bless you, he brings someone into your life. When the devil wants to destroy you, he brings someone into your life. Listen, blessing or curse or destruction is through people. So you have to be very careful. The people that you contract relationships with, you have to very, listen. All of you, go check out your friends. Do an audition on all all your friends and audit on all your friends, all your friends and audit on all your friends. I don't care who they are. Do an audit on all, and I don't care how long you've been together. Do an audit on all your friends because listen, certain things going on in your life is because of the people in your life right now. It's because of the people in your life right now. That is why you're experiencing those things, but you have no idea why. Do you know why you experience those things? Because they are speaking into your life daily. Those are, your, those are the closest people to you and they're speaking into your life. They are speaking into your life. How many more minutes do I have? <laughs> Hello. Round about 15. Ha uh, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, Wait, can you... you can go for as long because this is too good. But yeah, 15 minutes. <laughs> yes, it's okay. Can you unmute, unmute Miss Mark? Unmute her. Oh, right. Okay. That's fine. Um, Miss Mark, you can unmute yourself. Okay, you looking like you're, shocked. <laughs> you're looking shocked. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. What was the first thing I said? What, was the, what did I start with? Purpose. Purpose. Okay. Out of all the things I've said, what has struck you? Many things, but no, just one. Just tell me one. Just one. Never be with anyone who doesn't honor you. Good, honor you. Okay, good. So, 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 you guys write down your questions and all that, and we'll have conversations later. So, the next thing is trust, trust, trust. Microsoft, Microsoft says, trust, but verify. 
Should I repeat that? Microsoft, this is what they say. Trust, but verify. What does it mean? It means, simply means, before you trust, go and verify. So if you meet a girl or a guy and the guy says, I have five cats, verify that he has those five cats. Verify and make, listen, make, make sure you see those cats. Say, I have five cats. Say, yes, where are the cats? So everything people tell you, don't, don't, take, don't just swallow things before you just trust people. Don't just give out your trust. Your trust is very expensive. So make sure you verify, verify. No, so I meet people and they say stuff and I say, um, I have to check this thing out. And they say, well, you don't trust me. I said, look, I don't know you. How can I trust you? I don't know you. So why should I trust you? I don't know you. So I mean, they want to manipulate me. I just, you know, I say, oh, I mean, you don't believe what I'm saying. I said, I don't know you. I have to verify. So when you meet someone and they start saying, let me tell you something. People will always give you the very best parts of themselves. They will tell you, give you the very best part. And they will hide the bad parts. They will hide it. They won't, they won't, they won't tell you the bad part. I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys an example now. So this, I know this guy. He's in, the, he's, in the, he's in the States. He left from here to go marry some chick in the, in the States. Do you know what happened? Through all the time they were doing their courtship and everything and they were talking and the love was flowing, blah, blah, blah. The guy failed to ask this question. He failed to ask that, are you in debt? Are you in any debt? Why? Because the girl looked good, nice cars, nice everything. I mean, I mean, if you're not wise, you won't ask that question. He didn't ask, are you in debt? Well, that woman has about $300,000 worth of debt and he only discovered when they got married. $300,000 worth of debt. That is how she has on her head. And according to their laws, he's also responsible right now because they are married. So, you know, they have to carry that. They have to carry it together. So trust, but verify. So ask those questions. Ask those questions. I mean, they might say, oh, you don't trust me. You think I'm not going to reveal if I have any debt. I'm just asking. Let me know. What's your credit score? Let me see. Let's see. Let's see. Show me. Yeah. Let's see your credit. Let's see your credit score. Let's let's have this conversation. Yeah. Let's see. And if they and if they refuse to have a particular conversation, that means they're hiding something for you. Walk. Just walk. Don't don't don't. Um, if they refuse to have those conversations, just walk. So trust, but verify. Trust, but very always verify. Verify stuff. Now, this is the last thing I'm going to talk about. Amos three three. He says, "Can two walk together except they agree?" Can two walk together except they agree? Amos 3 3. Can two walk together except they agree? You guys are always arguing. You guys are always fighting. You guys are always in disharmony. You guys, you, you're looking east. He's looking west. Everything you want white, he wants black. You know, um, you want you 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 want to go to Africa, he wants to go to Asia. Can two walk together except they agree? Can two walk together except they agree? I'm not saying there won't be, you know, you guys at times that you have intellectual discussions and, you know, you have arguments on things. But fundamental issues, there must be agreement. There must be agreement. There must be agreement on your spiritual relationship. There must be agreement on your vision. There must be agreement on your commitment to the Lord Jesus. There must be agreement. You must have agreement on those fundamental things in your life. Of course, so you argue about certain things and all that. That's okay. Those things don't matter. But the things that matter to you, the things, the things that are important to you, do you have agreement in those areas? Not the things that matter to the other, to, the, to, 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 to your partner. No, to you. You. What matters? What is important to you? What, 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 what is important to you? And don't compromise. No, no compromise. If there's no agreement on the fundamentals, can two work together unless they agree? If there is no agreement on the fundamentals in your life, the things that are important to you, that relationship is going to cost you pain. It will cost you pain. But when there, when, when there is agreement, when, when there's agreement on certain fundamentals, do you understand? Then there will be peace. There will be peace. No matter what you guys go through, you, no matter what you guys go through, um, you will come out on top. The, the Bible talks about that. The Bible says that two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Two are better than one, not just two better than one. Two that are in agreement. Two that are in agreement. They are better than one. In agreement, the power of agreement. They agree, the power of agreement. What two of you agree on earth? So you have to agree on the fundamentals. There are fundamentals you must agree on. Amos 3.3, 3, can two work together except they agree? The answer is no. You can't work together except there is agreement. And if there is no agreement, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to give a story before I, I, I round up. 
I'm going to give a story. So I was in a Mr. Biggs in Nigeria several years ago. I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe up to 10 years or 11 years ago. I wasn't in, in a Mr. Biggs in Nigeria. So this lady saw me. Oh, say Pastor Praise, Pastor Praise. And she runs up to me. And, you know, um, she said, Pastor Praise, see that guy over there? Um, he's, he's, uh, he's my fiance, he wants to marry me, blah, 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 blah. Could you have, could you, could you talk with him for like, could you talk with him and, and just see and just let, just let me be sure, you know, that, you know, I, I want to marry him. I said, ah, really? At Mr. Biggs, that's where I said, I said, I just said, okay. I said, okay. So I sat down with this guy. We had Mr. Biggs that so many people around us were, were having this. So I had a conversation with him. Now I wasn't asking him. I was just talking generally. Oh, how's your ministry? How's your work? How's your business? How's your, you know, how are you doing? And all that. I was talking generally. So as I was talking with him generally, it just occurred to me, well, part of my prophetic gift, just occurred to me that this guy is, this guy is lying. This guy is a liar. This guy is a liar. Just occurred to me that this guy is a liar. Okay. He did not say anything to make me question him. He was just telling me about his business and ministry, and that's all I was just asking. But it just came out, this guy's lying. So I said, okay. So I went to, I tell, I, I, I stood up, I told the lady, I said, that guy is a liar and he does not want to marry you. So she says, how do you know? I said, because the Holy Spirit revealed, revealed it to me. I know, I know, I know. I've been working with the Holy Spirit for many years. I know, when the Holy Spirit tells me, I know. So I said, this guy is lying. He's a liar. He doesn't want to marry you. He's just using you, and when he's ready, he will just throw you away. He doesn't want to marry you. I said, okay. So the lady, in her wisdom, she went and told the guy. <laughs> so in her wisdom, she told the guy. So do you know what happened? So the guy now started telling her that, oh, Mr. Praise George is a false prophet, blah, 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 blah. He's a false prophet. So they started sending me WhatsApp messages and sending me text messages and blah, blah, blah. You're a false prophet. You stop destroying relationships, blah, blah, blah. I said, it's okay. Don't worry. It's okay. So ladies and gentlemen, six months later, it was discovered that that guy already had a child. That guy was already married six months later. It was discovered. So he had his family and packed them somewhere and he was busy deceiving this lady in Lagos. He was busy deceiving this lady in Lagos. So listen, so I, I knew, I, I, I was just looking at, I said, no, I said, this guy, I said, this guy is lying. He's lying. He does, he's not interested. So he wasn't interested in the lady. He just wanted to use her and, and just, and he was using spirituality as a cover. He was using spirituality as a cover. So don't, 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 listen, you have to verify. It doesn't matter who says what, you have to verify. Last thing I'm going to say before I answer your questions, always have a mentor over your relationships. Always have a mentor over your relationship. I know you guys are adults, you're smart. I mean, you're brilliant and all that. Yeah, always have a mentor. They can save you from years of, of pain, of sorrow. They can save you. They can save you. Have a mentor. The moment you have a relationship, you want to have a relationship with somebody, have a mentor, somebody older than you, somebody spiritual, somebody who's who, who's been with the Lord for a while, and go have a conversation with that person. Find somebody. You might say, Oh, I don't know anybody. No, go find somebody. Find somebody. Why? Because there are many wolves out there, male wolves, female, they're just everywhere. You know, and they're looking for somebody to devour. So the moment you want to, you're feeling you, 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 I mean, you're just having. Um, feelings for someone and you're feeling okay, I would like to have this person go talk to somebody and say, listen, I'd like you to be my mentor in this over this relationship and just watch over this relationship for me. Because let me tell you, there are things you can never see. You, ca you can't see them. Do you know why? Because you're blinded by love. You're just blind. You're blinded by love. Just bl You're just blind. You can't see. So it takes somebody who is outside that relationship to see what is going on and tell you that this is what is going on, this is what is going on, this is what is going on. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> what a way to end it. Thank you so yeah. much, sir. Um, we really, really value your... Um, your... Okay. So, thank you. 
So yeah, so, we'll have questions to ask. Okay, let's have the questions. If I can, I'll answer. If I can't, that's that. Okay. <laughs> well, that's the truth of the matter. If I can, I will. If I can't, that's that. Okay, so. All right. Um, yeah. If I share my screen, actually, hopefully you'll be able to see. Okay. Okay, you have a question. Dura has a question or what? Can everyone see my screen? As a Christian, can I date a Muslim? No. No. 1,000% no. Don't try it. Don't, don't, don't think about it. Don't try it. Don't try it. We have 2.3 billion Christians. Why? What are you going to look for a Muslim? 2.3 billion Christians. Why are you looking for a Muslim and a non-believer? <laughs> These guys. <laughs> oh boy. So is it okay to date somebody who is not wait? So is it okay to date somebody who is not necessarily as spiritual as you desire? Is someone who is not prophetic? No, the person. I mean, somebody that doesn't have to be prophetic. No, you know, mm -hmm. somebody who who loves the Lord, who is at least who is devoted. Um, let me tell you, the worst thing that can happen to you is to you 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 in a relationship with somebody and the person just tells you that listen, I'm not, I'm not. Um, I'm, I'm not I'm not going to church anymore. I'm not doing that anymore in the middle of your journey. No, that, that would be devastating. I mean, that would be devastating. So in fact, because you have to so you have to take some time to study them and everything. And also, when you take the person to your mentor, what does your mentor say about the person? And also, let me tell you something. Always, always ask questions about that person in in his um in his circle just ask questions and and find out just ask questions and find out you know is this person really what they say they are blah 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 just find out so how do we set our expectation standards without being too picky or realistic it's your standard is your expectation nobody can nobody it's your life so you have your own values you have your own standards you have your own expectations um unrealistic um that is why you need a mentor in your life so you can share some of these things with a mentor and the mentor will say okay this this is okay 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 but this particular area you need to work on this issue because um you, um you can um you can be malleable you can you can adapt to certain things but there are things you cannot adapt to so um so set up your own your own you have your own values you have your own standards you have your own expectations and you know um very important let me tell you one of the most important things to me one of the most important things to me in a in in my wife one of the most important things to me is that listen if i go we go anywhere and my wife is asked to stand up and speak and say something she is going to say exactly or even better than whatever i'm going to say that means i know what i know i know her values i know i know what's in her mind i know i know i know her relationship with the lord so i can trust her that listen if we're in a public place and i say listen um uh, Mrs. George, have a have a have a um, say something. What will come out of our mouth will be something that will bless people. So those are some of my values, and I don't I don't joke with that. You know, um, what's an ungodly relationship? A relationship that is that is um that is not based on biblical principles. Some of the principles I told you, some of those things, that there's no purpose. If there's no purpose, there's going to be chaos. If there's no purpose, there's just be, it's just a chaotic relationship because you guys have no direction. So I'm asking you, okay, so um so I, I like jane what do you want from jane what do you want from jane ladies listen to me ladies ninety days ninety days into a relationship ninety days i'm giving you ninety days ninety days is very long but you know at least within ninety days you'll have you'll have you, i mean you get to know somebody you guys are chatting you guys you go out for a drink blah 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 so you're getting to know the person 90 days, ask the person, what do you want from me? 90 days, in 90 days. If the person cannot tell you that this is what I want from you, it's an ungodly relationship, just forget it. It's an ungodly relationship, just forget it. It's an ungodly, just forget it because there's no purpose to it. Just say, uh, so let's just go on, let's just go. No, 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 no. Let, no let's, just, let's just see where it leads. No, we're not seeing where it leads. You have to know exactly what you want. Don't tell me I want, you want to see where it leads. What are you mm. talking about? For the next two years, you'll be telling me that you want to see where it leads. No, no, 
No, um, within those two years, they would, have, they would have done a lot of damage to you and you can't recover anymore. So 90 days, hello, hello, what, what, do you want, let's, what do you want exactly from this relationship? And let me, tell you what, let me tell you the right answer. Let me tell you the right answer. The right answer is marriage. That's the right answer. Every other answer is wrong. Yes. Yes, every other answer is wrong. So the right answer is marriage. Yes. Every other answer is wrong. Day, 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 day two of meeting my wife, day two, day two, day two, I want to marry you. Day two, 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 day two, I want to marry you. Day two, two, two. Oh, Meanwhile, a brother will take two years and be talking absolute nonsense. You're still praying. Pray for what? Pray for what? Pray for what? <laughs> Day two, I told her, listen, I want to marry you. That's, that's it. I want to marry you. I haven't got time for nonsense. I want to marry you. Because I've seen what I want. I, 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 you are the person I want to marry you, period. So let's work this thing out and see how, how we're going to get married. Let, let, let not, so I'm not joking. I don't want to, no, I want to marry you. So that's a godly relationship because there is purpose to it. There is direction to it. And so you're not there to waste time and waste, any, waste anybody's time. How much of a role does this attraction play in entering a relationship? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's there. It's natural. it's natural. It's natural. Physical attraction is natural. I mean, it's, it's natural. You're attracted to people because of the way they look and all that. Uh, maybe I have a question, sir. Sorry. Wait, I'm saying some questions. Let me finish talking about. There's some questions here. Just wait, man. Just wait. There's some questions here. Physical attraction is important. What is not is not the most important. Physical attraction is not the most important. Things that can things that are mental, that are emotional, that are spiritual are more important than the physical. Because when problems come, the physical cannot help you. What will help you is the the. <laughs> The, the, the person's intelligence or brilliance and the person's spirituality and the person's vision and the, and the person's character, those are the things that matter. Character is more important than physical beauty. Character is more important. Is more important. Is more important. Like this guy is six feet tall and he has money. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. Should forgiveness only apply once in a committed relationship? I don't understand. Forgiveness for what? What is it? Forgiveness for what? What are you forgiving for? What, what are you forgiving for? You, um, what, what is the issue? What is, the, what is the problem? Let me, I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm going to tell you guys something. Marriage magnifies everything. Should I say that again? You better write it down. Marriage magnifies everything. Marriage magnifies everything. So marriage magnifies your weaknesses and marriage mag uh, magnifies strengths. So if you see a weakness now and you think, oh, this weakness will go away. No, hello, it's going to become a Goliath if you marry this person. So look at that thing very well. If you see that you cannot handle this thing right now, that's it, just go. Don't think marriage magnifies. Marriage magnifies everything. So if the person is a little crazy now, the person will be like a mad person in marriage. You just married a, a lunatic. <laughs> She's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so marriage magnifies everything so you're looking at listen this thing i'm saying can i is it something i can handle because the things will just get bigger and bigger can i handle it so how long is it to, how long is too long to date a person listen like like i said within 90 days to six months you guys you have you should have an agenda have an agenda 24 months is okay to, to plans and put things in. Okay, let me start by saying that if you are not ready, don't start a relationship. If you are not ready, don't start because you will waste everybody's time. So if you're not ready, like you're, you're, you've looked at your life and you're ready and say, listen, I'm ready. I want to get married. I'm looking, I want to get married now. I want to get married now. That's when you should, that's when you should enter a relationship. Don't, don't drag people around. Don't, I, I just I posted a tweet now about people, some people's their relationship like the children of Israel getting out of Egypt and wandering in the in, in the in the in the wilderness for 40 years. Just be carrying someone's son and daughter and be wandering around the wilderness. Why? Because you're not ready. Just be carrying someone's daughter and son around the wilderness, around the wilderness, because you're not ready. 
So when you're ready, that's when you contract a relationship. You're ready. Say, I'm ready. I'm, 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 I'm ready now for a relationship. If you're not ready, forget it. Don't, don't waste your energy and your time. Have friends. There are many friends. But the moment you enter into a, a, um, a romantic relationship with someone, make sure that you're ready. If you're not ready, it's going to be disastrous. If you're not ready, you'll be in, tr you'll be in trouble. That is why you need a mentor, somebody to talk to, somebody to have conversations with, or you're going to be in trouble. Never trust your emotions. Your emotions can deceive you. Should I say that again? Never trust your emotions. Your emotions <laughs> can deceive you. Your emotions can make you fall in love with a, with a thief. Your, your, your emotions can make you fall in love with the devil. You can be in love with the devil and say, oh, how I, I, I love the devil. Are you saying in such a romantic way? Because it's his emotion. It's just emotional. Your emotion can, you, don't trust your emotions. Please, don't trust your emotions. Don't trust your emotions. Huh? Don't trust your emotions. How, how does a lady set boundaries in a relationship without seeming too forward? It's your life. Um, it's your life. Set boundaries and say no as often as you please. It is your life. It is your life. If you cannot set boundaries now, you never set boundaries. So it is your life. Set, set boundaries and say no. If you have to say no, say it. Say it and don't hide it. Don't say you offend this person. Say it. Say no. No, this, no. And say it very quickly and say it very fast and say it very clear. Say no. No is a complete sentence. So just, you know, is a complete sentence. I, and listen, listen to me. You don't need to explain your life to anybody. You don't owe anybody an explanation. Just no, that's that. No, it's not going to happen. And that's that. No is a complete sentence. No, <laughs> no has a complete degree. No, no, that no is a powerful word. Learn to use it. Learn to use it. And many, many, many people are weak and they don't want to say no. Let me see. Do you believe that God has ordained specific person for us? No, there's no specific person. There's none. Because if there was a specific person, if that person screwed up, that means your life is messed up. There's no specific person. There are people that you can connect with and you guys have to agree in faith to move forward and, and build a life together. That's why I said purpose. So you have your, when your purpose, when your purpose agree, you know, God may lead you to somebody and, and the person may, may mess up his, his or her life, but you're not responsible for those people. Um, um, no, God has given you freedom. You can choose. Choose the person that you want in your life. Do you know why? Do you know why He has given you freedom to choose? So that you take responsibility for your choices. Choice has consequence. So when you choose, you, it, there's a consequence to it. Choice has consequence. So take responsibility for your choices. So don't blame God. Oh, God told me. No. Let me tell you something. Let me let me tell you something. I can tell you who not to marry. I can say this guy or this lady is not good for you. I can say that. But I cannot tell you marry this person. I won't tell you. I will tell you to make, I will, I, will, I, will, I will tell you make that decision yourself. But I won't tell you that, oh, you have to marry this person now. I've never done that in all my life. I've never said, oh, marry this person. I, I don't do that. Do you know why? Because people have to take responsibility for their choices and decisions. But I can tell you this person is bad. I can say that. And I will say it, this person is not good for you. I can say it. Find somebody else. But I won't tell you that this, this is the person, go marry. No, I won't tell you to go marry the person. You have to make a decision, a choice, so that you take responsibility for your choices. Um, do you believe God? No. To what extent do platonic Christian friends need to set boundaries? Set boundaries. Let me tell you guys. Wait, who is the, who is the youngest person here? Is there any 18-year-old, 21-year-old? Um, who, who is the youngest? Can I say, can I be free to speak as I, can I, can I be free? Let me tell you something. Listen, listen. If you don't set boundaries now, Two things, you have to, sorry, you have to know why you're going to the relationship. You know, you have to know you're ready. You have to know you're ready. Um, and the person also has to be ready. And you have to have a mentor over you. Why? Because if your relationship begins to take too long, too long, you guys begin to get used to each other. You guys begin to want each other. You guys begin to, you know, be sexually attracted to each other. And there will be a problem. You know, sexual attraction is good, is natural, is all that. Now, the problem is if you begin, it's too long. It's too long. Let me tell you something. You're not as spiritual as you think you are. All of you listening to me, all of you, all of you, you're not as spiritual as you think you are. You think you're really spiritual. You're not as spiritual as you think you are. You're not. You're not. You're not at all. So just tell yourself, I'm not as spiritual as I think I am. I'm human like every other person. If 
if I'm in this situation, I may fall into this situation and blah, 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 I rise up from this situation. The greatest problem you have in your life is to be rising, falling and rising, falling and rising, falling and rising is a useless life. Don't do that to yourself. So get a mentor, get somebody who will watch over your relationship and, and help, help um, direct channel your relationship towards marriage. Or else you will just waste your energy with somebody and all you guys are doing is just, your, is just sex. Sex and you destroy your life. Just sex and it's just a waste of time. So you need to have a mentor. You need somebody over that relationship to watch over that relationship. It doesn't matter. You're 30, 30 years old. I'm sure I'm older than all of you here. Maybe apart from Sister Tony, I'm older than all of you here. So yes, so I'm older than all of you here. I can give you advice. Hmm? I can give all of you advice on, on relationship. So let me tell you, let me tell you, you're not as spiritual as you think you are. You're, you're going to do some things and you wonder, hey, did I do this thing? Yes, you did it because you're human. So you have to you have to protect yourself, and the way you protect yourself is by going to a relationship with purpose and setting a time frame. And this is what I want to happen. We set a time frame. We set a time frame for marriage. That okay, I want to marry you at this time frame, and we set up working towards it. Set up working towards it immediately. Don't waste time, or else you will just start. You will just start a journey, the journey of the children of Israel, and just be going round in circles. Just be going around the cell. And let me tell you a problem. Let me tell you, let me tell you a problem. The longer the relationship, the more the person will discover your weaknesses and change their mind. I'm gonna tell you something. Ladies, guys, I wish I can mute all these men so that they won't listen. I want to talk to women alone. I wish I can mute all the men so that the women, women will hear me. Can, wait, wait, wait. Mute all the men. Can you mute? You can't mute all the men. <laughs> I want to mute all the men. So listen to me, ladies. Listen to me. Listen to me. The moment a, a guy starts sleeping with you, having sex with you, and the man, the man starts sleeping with you, he will start seeing your weaknesses, and you won't be the, the same glorious woman he saw before. He will just start seeing your weaknesses. He will just start seeing your weaknesses. Just start seeing your weaknesses. That is why you keep, you keep, you keep your, you, I mean, you keep your treasures locked. Because the moment he starts sleeping with you, you just start seeing things. Just start seeing things. Just start saying things, and you just start saying things, and you, don't, you just keep wondering, ah, oh, why I'm sleeping with this guy? Should love me more? No, 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 no. He's seeing your weaknesses. He will just start seeing all your weaknesses, and you just wonder why this guy loved me two weeks ago. Hello, it is natural. So when when we say when when I say that um, keep the sex, protect the step, sex, try and control it. And let me tell you, ladies, you control it. You have the power. You are the one that have, you have the power. You are more powerful than men. Hello. Women, you're more powerful than men. So when you say no, when you say no, that's it. That's no. That's no. Because the moment that guy starts sleeping with you, he starts seeing your weaknesses. The moment he starts seeing your weaknesses, he just say, he just starts telling himself, why am I with this lady? So let him see your weaknesses, the weakness he has not seen. Let him see it in marriage. You're already married to him. He can't sleep with you and see weaknesses and still dump you. No, no, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Do you understand what I'm saying? You women. I love Jimmy. I love Jimmy. I love Jimmy. No. <laughs> no. Don't make it. The moment, let me tell you, the moment he, that guy starts sleeping with you, sleeping with you, he starts seeing your weaknesses. And he will just start talking anyhow to you. And you just wonder, why is this guy, what's up? It's a sex. It's a, it's a sex. So that's why you should... Package the sex and package it very well for marriage. Package it well for marriage. Let him marry you. Let him marry you. So how do you descend between someone who is forward because they know what they want, have not God because, or because they're naive? I don't know. How do you discern? It depends on you. You, what do you want? What do you want? And you have also, you have to test, 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 test. Anything they're saying, make sure make sure it's test it's tested, and and search and do research and and ask questions. Let me tell you, the FBI, how do they catch criminals? FBI, how do they catch criminals? When the FBI, when they're having a conversation with you, maybe I don't know a twenty minute or thirty minute conversation, they will ask the same question in ten different ways. They will ask the same question in ten different ways. That is how they catch liars. The same question. They will ask it in 10 different ways, but you will not realize they're asking the same question in 10 different ways. But they're asking the same question. So you're asking the same question. 
the same thing that the person has told you. Just ask about that thing. Oh, so you said you have five cats. Okay. What's the cat's name? Oh, there's one called Molly. Okay. Oh, hi, it's Molly. Hi, it's Molly. Blah, 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 blah. You're just talking. Out of nowhere, just say, oh, hi, it's Molly. And the guy says, who is Molly? Or what is Molly? The guy's been lying to you. There is no Molly. There is no Molly anywhere. <laughs> so just out of the blue, just ask about the cat and say, oh, hi, it's Molly. And the guy will just say, um, who is Molly? <laughs> Man, he's been lying. So that is how to get, that's it. So you keep asking questions, you verify. Let me tell you guys, don't, let me, let me, let me tell you something. Don't lie about anything in your life. You don't want, don't lie. Don't, don't, this is who you are. This is what you are. This is who you are. You don't have to lie. You don't have to be any, anything to anybody. God will send the right person into your life. The person that belongs to you, the person who will connect with you, the person who will worship the very ground on which you walk. You don't have to lie to anybody. You don't have to lie to anybody. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't have to, you don't have to, no need, no need to compromise your Christianity and your value and your work with the Lord because of a human being. A human being that can abandon you. No, don't do that. Don't, don't, no, 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 no. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. Don't, com don't do that. Don't do that. Don't compromise. Please. What, be what are the benefits of relationships, married compared to singleness? This topic can seem very stressful. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, I don't know. Hey, you guys go on Amazon and get some of my books. Praise George. I have some books on relationships. Try and get them. But finding direction, that book, finding direction. When you get on my on my Amazon, Amazon page, praise judge, finding direction, get it. Finding direction and clarity. Finding direction and clarity. Get it. Get those books. They will they will they will save you a lot of problem. I'm telling you. Finding direction. Read that book. Read that book and recommend it to all your friends. Finding direction. Um, what are the benefits of relationships? The Bible says that, listen, I don't know, I don't know. The Bible says once I put to flight a thousand. Two shall put to flight 10,000. That's a benefit of relationship. That's a benefit of marriage. One, let me tell you, no matter what you think you've accomplished that right now with your life, when you have somebody who, who is connected to you, you will achieve more. You will manifest more. And that's it. That is why you should find somebody who, who, um, who aligns with your values and your purpose. Find somebody who aligns your value and your purpose. Where are we? Emmanuel, you wanted to ask a question, right? Unmuted. Yes, sir. I did put it in the, the questions, but I don't think it's been Okay, you know, let me see. Should forgiveness of, of hearts cause only occur in marriage or with the cement uh, also happen when dating is not deal breaker? For, forgiveness of her. I don't understand. I don't understand this question. Who asked it? I don't I don't I don't know this I don't this last question. Um, I don't, Emmanuel, ask my, the question. My question was um during the season of courtship. Um, perhaps you've asked people before and maybe they've declined saying, I don't want to commit to, to, to such being a mentor, but how do you find a good mentor? Um, I know some people say it could be their pastor, but if your pastor is like newly married, how, how do you find a good mentor? There are people, there are married people in your, in your congregation, on, the, on your area, and your, they're, they're, they're married people. So, and you can even ask questions, ask your friends. Do you know you? So ask, do you know any godly couple? They don't have to be pastors, but people who have been together, they've been together for a long time and they are Christians, you know? Mm -hmm. So they've been through hard times and good times together and they are still together. Those people can tell you the truth, not, not just pastors. Not just, just, it's not just pastors. Normal Christians, but they've been together. So they can tell you, listen, we've gone through hard times and we've come out and we've come through and God has helped us. So they can be honest and open with you. Sometimes um, um, pastors will not tell you the things you want to hear because you're a member of their congregation and they might not like to say things that will be offensive to you. They try to protect, mm -hmm. they, won't, they won't tell you anything that might offend you. Um, if you ask me, I will say all the things that will offend you. I will say them and you will thank me later. I will say all the mm -hmm. things that will offend you. I will say them because it is better to say the truth and you're offended than to lie and you're happy. How many of you remember Mark 10 when, when, Jesus, when Jesus spoke to that rich young ruler and he told him about the kingdom? Do you remember that the guy went away sorrowful and depressed yeah. and crying? Do you remember that? That was Jesus, told him the truth. And the guy went away sorrowful. That's what the Bible says. Some translation says the guy was depressed. The, the guy was crying. But Jesus told him the truth. But he refused to receive it. So some pastors will not like to tell you the truth because it, it will be offensive. So go meet other people. There are so many people 
in this in this in the in the country in London, there's so many good people. There's so many. So ask some questions. Ask some questions. You will see some people that you connect with them. So what is your take on the statement opposite attract? Yes, that's it. Opposite attract. Opposites, not opposites in value. Opposite in personality types, not in values. Personality. Do you understand? Not opposite in values. Opposites in personality. Different personalities attract. They, they work together. Um, so you bring your strength, this person bring their strength and they join. So those are the opposites that attract, not opposites in value. Not opposite, not opposites in values or direction or you know. Any other question? Do you think that the church glorifies relationships and what I don't understand what glorifies relationships with me? I don't want to, I want what could this have on single people? Single people, how can single people find purpose? I've told you purpose is the first thing. That's a, that's very important to you. Purpose is the main thing in your life. You pursue your purpose. And as you are pursuing your purpose, you will begin to see people who are going in the same direction with you. That is why it's very impo important for you to pursue purpose. And that's the reason why you're here. That's the reason why we're all here. Let me tell you something. We're all not, we're not here for marriage. That, that's not why we're here. We're here for purpose. That's why we're here. All of us, we're here for purpose. Relationship and marriage is supposed to help you find somebody who can who can agree with you and and increase your productivity and and and, and power exponentially and help you produce and manifest in ways you never thought possible. So that's what a relationship is. So one shall put to fight a, a thousand, two shall put to fight ten thousand, and all the other things about you know emotional and all that. Um, 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 values that you, I mean, or benefits that you have in relationship. Those are important. But purpose first. First purpose. If there's no purpose, there is a problem. There is a problem. I'm going to say something very quickly. Just came to my mind. Listen, if you have been, if you've had more than one relationship and you've been breaking up and breaking up and breaking up, just take it easy. Calm down. Look, look at your character. Question your character. Fix your character. Everybody cannot be wrong. Everybody you meet, you fight. You guys end up breaking up, fighting, all that. So I was in a relationship with this lady. So you know what? This particular lady, she had anger issues. Not just ordinary anger issues. She had anger issues that we could be out somewhere. Maybe, maybe we're out at Burger King or something and she would just go crazy. She would just go crazy in public. Hello. Hello. She would just go crazy in public. Like her, she couldn't control her anger issues. I said, no, this can't work. This can't work. You know, because you embarrass me, embarrass everybody. I mean, it's okay to get angry, but you can control your anger. The Bible says that, listen, um, the fruit of the spirit is temperament and self-control. There is self-control. You can control yourself. You can't be outside. You can't be on the, you know, and you just go crazy, just go wild on the streets. No, 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 no. So if you have character issues, fix them. Stop blaming people. The first person was bad, was wrong for you. The second person was bad for you. The third, third person was bad for you. Hello. Hello, sister perfect or brother perfect. Fix yourself. Fix yourself. If I laugh it. <laughs> okay. So, any question? Any other question? I'm done. Any other question? Let me say this thing very quickly. Let me say this very quickly. People may come to you and say, listen, we want to keep our relationship. We want to keep it. Let's keep it. Let's keep it. Um, Let's keep it from everyone. I don't want people to know. Run. 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 So I don't just run. They just come to you and say, listen, we don't want anybody to know about this relationship. Let's just keep it between just you and I. That person wants to destroy you. <laughs> that person wants to destroy you. The moment you want to be in a relationship with somebody, find somebody, find somebody who somebody who is somebody you respect. And tell the person that listen, I'm in a relationship with this person. Tell the person immediately. Let me tell you something. No matter how smart you think you are, you are still going to you are going to have problems. You no matter how think how smart you think you are, 
all of you are thinking you're very smart. You're the smartest person in the world. Well done. You're still going to have problems when it comes to relationships. Why? Because, because the person is a stranger. The person is a stranger. For 20 something years of your life, you've, you've not known this person, or 30 years of your life, known, and you've not met the person, and you just think everything will just work out. No, you're going to have challenges. That is why you need to let somebody know that something is happening. And the person, you can have those conversations. You can have those conversations. You can have those conversations. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of letting somebody know that there is, listen, I have a relationship. I'm interested in within this person, and I, want to, I would like to marry this person. I'm interested. Don't be afraid. And don't hide it. Never hide it. Never don't don't hide it. It's going to it can save your life. Don't don't hide it. Please, 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 please. Many years ago, 30 something years ago, met this lady, and the lady just told me I was so naive, ignorant, and stupid. I mean, she was a woman of the world, like wow. <laughs> woman of the world, like wow. So she just told me, Oh, you know, let's not, you know, let's not tell everybody, you know. Because I mean, she was a she was like a big girl in church at that time. Don't tell anybody, you know. Let us just between you and I. It was a grave mistake. It was a terrible mistake because I mean, I had no idea. I was just stupid. I had no idea. You think I'm talking about the relationship because I, I've not gone through things. I've gone through many things. I've gone through many things. I mean, so the, I just started discovering all the things she was doing and all the nonsense she was doing and everything. That was why she didn't want anybody to know, you know. And I was just, I just, I just fell into it, you know. So, first thing you tell me, what, want to be in a relationship, go find somebody to tell. Tell somebody, tell somebody, and the person can ask you the right questions. The right questions you you might not ask because you're blinded by love. Love always blinds you. You won't see. So ask somebody else. I'm done. Wow. Mute. Okay. Wow. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Time literally jumped. I think um, we're done with questions because really and honestly, we have literally come to the end of <laughs> the whole session. Literally one and a half hours went like we blinked our eyes. So um, all we can say is thank you so much, sir. We really honor you. We really honor all that you have said. Um, I think... Um, the Bible says in the multitude of um, counsel, um, um, counsel, there is wisdom. There is safety, and yeah. mm -hmm. so, um, it's so there nice is. to know that, you know, we, we can... No, excuse well, me. Counsel. Angela, excuse me. Excuse me. Can I pray for my brother, Emmanuel? Can I pray for you? Yes. Let me tell you something. I'm, God wants to use you in an exceptional way, in, in a way that you, you have not been used before, God wants to use you. And I'm seeing it, it is tied to the work of your hands and it's tied to it's tied to what you do. God wants to use you in an exceptional way. God wants to use you. And God, God is making a demarcation between where you are right now and your past. God is making a demarcation between where you are right now and your past. God is making a demarcation between where you are right now and your past. So God is pushing your past away and God is opening a new curtain for you. A new, it's opening. I see, I just see a curtain opening for you. It's, it's a new thing God is opening up for you and it has to do with the work of your hands and God is going to do some great things through the work of your hands, through through the skill sets that is given you and God is going to do some great things and I, some 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 awesome things and God is going to work through you and and you have to you have to release yourself into it and and let the Lord guide you and guide your steps to the to the places and to the things that he wants you to do and it, and it's amazing I see it awesome and I see God being glorified in your life and using you to be to be an example and an inspiration to to many other people you will be an inspiration and you'll be an example of how God can turn things around and God can turn a life around and God can start something from scratch and take it to the very top that's what I'm saying the Lord bless you the Lord give you wisdom the Lord give you understanding the Lord strengthen you the Lord the Lord demarcate your past and push away the past and start something new in your life and the Lord bless the work of your hands amen Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen, Angela. Just a quick thing. So can I leave That's now? No. Mark, put, uh, on put, put on your mic. Put on your mic. Put on your mic. Put on your mic. Can you hear me? Listen to me. Oh, my goodness. Listen to me. Okay. There are many deceivers around you. 
deceivers. There are people, there are deceivers around you. Listen to me, listen, listen to me, listen to me. There are deceivers around you. And God will be, will, 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 don't, don't bother, don't, you'll be fine. Don't bother, don't try to do anything. Just be your normal self, you'll be fine. Just live your life normally. Don't, don't, when I finish saying what I'm saying, do as if I didn't say it, don't worry. You understand, I'm going to say it, but just relax. Don't, don't change anything because of anything I'm saying. Don't look at anybody in a suspicious manner. Don't, don't worry, don't, don't worry. You'll be fine. Thank you. But there are deceivers around you and they're taking advantage of you and God is going to expose them one by one and God is going to push them out of your life and God is going to bring people into your life who will empower you. And I see them empowering you financially and people who believe in your dream and people who believe in you. God is going to bring them into your life. And the people who are there and certain, certain sets, I, I just see deceivers and people who just want to take from me and drain you, but, but emotionally and spiritually and financially, people who just want to drain you, and God is separating them and pushing them away, and God is bringing new people into your life who are going to empower you and be a blessing to you, and you'll be so, you'll be so amazed and just wonder, where have these people been all my life? Because this is the time that you've made certain commitments to the Lord, and the Lord is going to honor you and honor the commitments that you've made to him and to the kingdom. God is going to honor those commitments that you've made. You made those commitments in the time of prayer. Personally, it's just you and God, and God is going to honor the commitments that you've made to him. And God is going to bring those people into your life and separate and push away the people who have been there deceiving and just taking from you and just sucking you dry and just emotionally, mentally, financially, just, just draining you. God is going to push them away and God is bringing new, new people into your life. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. The Lord bless you. Thank you. The Lord bless you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. Just a quick thing, uh, Pastor Praise. You'll be fine. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for everything. Really appreciate you. I just wanted to mention to everyone there. So um, there are quite a lot of books that Pastor Praise has written. Um, there are a lot of books on relationships, and loads of them, but there are also books on personal development and books on. Um, success and money actually so there are a lot of things that god has blessed him with and anointed him, anointed him with so please check those books out and certainly by the way we're going to have more of these um we certainly can do I stop? need it but um excuse me excuse me excuse me excuse me yeah. excuse me sammy yes, sir. sorry can i say something yes, sir. can everybody hear me yes sir somebody lost somebody you're listening to me and you lost you, you, you there was there was a particular deal that you did and you lost some money i, I don't know um you it, it, a few months a few months ago you lost some money and it, and it's very painful to you and it's hurting you and you've not recovered from it god is going to is going to create circumstances for you to recover to recover amen. you are going to recover amen you are going amen. to recover Listen to me. You will recover. You will recover. You don't need... You, listen to me. Just follow God the way you've been following God and just be... You, you'll be fine. You are going to recover. You, it, 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 it's so much on your mind that you feel so much pain when you, when you remember the money that you lost and then... Um, um, but go, you're going to recover. God will make room for you. God will create um, circumstances for you for you to recover. And, and you, would, you, you will be brought into a situation where you will be asked to deliver certain value and, and you will deliver that value and you will recover. That money will start coming back into your life. You will recover. Amen. You will recover. You will Amen. recover. You're blessed. You will recover. Amen. You will recover. Amen. 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 Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Sam. So, so um, just before we close, can we all... Um, virtually as much as possible, though I guess stretch out so towards past praise and let us just pray for him as he's blessed today. Let us just commit him onto the hands of God that God, the virtue that come out of him, Lord will increase him, will bless him indeed, he will bless his family, will bless his household, he will bless the ministry Amen. that he's laid on him, that he will Amen. increase him more and more, he will increase his greatness and comfort him on every side. This ministry will go to a new level to the praise and glory of his name. And each and every one of us today, as we have been a part of this, that we would, we would remember this day for good to the praise and glory of the name of the Lord. And Amen. once again, the Lord will increase the praise and glorify, use him for Amen. the praise of his glory. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Amen. Amen.
Okay, can I say this before I go? Yeah. Um, does everybody have my email? Do you have my email? You all have my email. Praise, praise at praisejudge.org. Praise at praisejudge.org. So if you have any question, anything you'd like us to discuss and everything, we can praise at praisejudge.org. That's my email. So thank you guys. So we'll talk later. I got to go. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Bless you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, bye. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. I think that's the end of our meeting. It was very nice. I think um, if you're going to send it, I've put it, I've put it in the chat. However, where we can um, reach out to him for questions, praise at praisegeorge dot org. So yeah, thank you so much. We'll see you another time. Thank you. God bless thank you. you. Thank you. Take care. Bye, everyone. Really? <laughs> you can have like me and you can have a meeting. <laughs> Wait, everyone.